concrete description of the economy that I, based on its assets and liabilities, than I've just shown you. So first off, we've got households. There are two columns here. Don't worry, you don't have to take this down. It's, on the, it's in the notes. You've got two columns here. The first column shows you assets, sources of money. And in the second column, you've got liabilities. Note for the households, it's really well developed. Households have money, bonds, equity, housing, all this stuff. They've got liabilities, mortgages, stuff like that, net worth. Firms have capital. They've got loans and bonds and equity and net worth. Okay? Government. <coughs> Faith and credit. Faith and credit. What is faith and credit? It's in inverted commas, specifically there for a reason. What is faith and credit? Where does money come from? We talked about it in week three. Where does money come from? What's the difference between this and this, besides the snot. <coughs> signature. Whose signature? Super Mario. Okay? Super Mario puts his, puts his name on a piece of paper, and you go, yeah, that's clearly worth a fiver. You have faith. You have faith that this is worth something, and if you give it to somebody else, it will work. 11 years ago now, I went backpacking in Croatia. It was September 2001. Uh, just before the Twin Towers were, were to be attacked. And uh, I, I'd, I'd been told that what you, the currency that you should use in Croatia, there had been a war there um, so, uh, just a few years before. The currency that you were to use was sterling. So I went, no problem. And being a student, I just transferred my money into sterling. The problem was they gave me Scottish sterling. This is sterling that's issued by the Bank of Scotland. So I rocked up to these guys in Croatia, and I said, hello, my good man, I would like a pint of your finest ale. And they went, no. And I was like, what? I said, no, this is not currency. And I said, but it is. I, tr I, tr I tr transferred Irish punts into, or euros even, into this. This is sterling. And they went, I've never seen it before. No. And I said, but no, look, 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 this is really important. And I went, no. They had no faith that my money was valid. And so my money was about as useful to me as a chocolate teapot. It sat in my pocket with my hungry belly and taught me a very important lesson about faith and credit. The next day I went to the bank, three banks actually, and I got real sterling. And this time it worked. And it was, now, don't forget, this is sterling. This is legal tender. If you, go to, if you go to England and you have Scottish sterling, they will accept it. But if you go to Croatia, they won't. They absolutely won't. And you will spend the night hungry. Faith and credit. The faith is, you believe Mario's signature is worth something. That's the faith. What's the credit? What's the credit? The credit is, you promise to pay the bearer. The credit is, effectively, you're creating this credit with me. This is a promissory note. I promise to pay the bearer, is what it says on many denominations all around the world. And we're going to see a little bit of that faith and credit in a minute, folks. The government uh, bonds, basically. Central bank, assets and liabilities, commercial banks, SPVs are called special purpose vehicles. Five years ago, I wouldn't have had this slide. This year, it's absolutely vital that I have this slide because we have a massive special purpose vehicle in Ireland. Does anybody know what it's called? NAMA. That's the reason, NAMA, the reason it, it's a special purpose vehicle and that's why it can be kept off the balance sheets of our economy. Leverage finance. This is, this is code for shadow banking. This is money that's created out of thin air based on uh, derivatives. So you've got CDOs, which are very specific very specific uh, types of funding mechanisms. Repos, which are called repurchase orders. And they've got loans, other repos, and equity. And then the rest of the world is held as liabilities. 
This is very important. The reason that I'm showing you this chart is not to bore you to death with balance sheets, but it's merely to show you that if one of these increases here, if this increases here, let's say, the, the amount of mortgages increases, yeah, then it has to come from somewhere. Where does the mortgage increase come from? Banks. How do they increase it? By increasing their mortgages. And if they increase their mortgages, it must be because they've increased something on the other side of their balance sheets. Which is what? Money or equity. Money probably. And where do they get this from? Banks. Either the central bank as uh, bonds or as um, from the rest of the world as international reserves. Okay? So when these things get out of whack, it's the balance sheet that suffers. It's the balance sheet that uh, uh, gets destroyed. And it's also the balance sheet that has to be repaired. And this is very, very important for you to understand. What's happening in Ireland at the moment is a series of attempts to repair the balance sheet and nothing more. Simply put, you are trying to get this thing very positive. Okay? Very positive. What's happened to the value of our housing? 50% drop. The value of, the of, uh, of that has dropped 50%. What does that mean for the value of your mortgage? Has the value of your mortgage gone down? No. So what does that mean? Negative equity. Welcome to the negative equity generation. There's going to be a program tomorrow, tomorrow night, uh, prime time, about the housing market. It's going to be really interesting. Um, so we'll see. Okay, so, so, so with, that, with that in mind, I would like you to buy me lunch. And I promised you at the start of this term that you would buy me lunch. And I'm, you are going to do it. So this is a 10 euro note. I'd like you all to note this is a 10 euro note. We're going to auction this 10 euro note off for the next 10 minutes. I am going to take your money. This is the bit where everybody goes, oh yeah, no. I am going to take your money. I'm going to repeat this three times just so later on, later on, you're going to go, oh yeah, you're joking. And I'm going to go, no, I wasn't joking. That bit where I repeated it three times. I am going to take your money. I am going to take your money. Now here's what's going to happen. You can send me a text message and you can bid for this asset. What is the value of this asset? Are you sure? How are you sure? Because you have faith and credit. It's not worth like 9 euros and 99 cents. Is it worth like 50 euros? It's worth a tenner. So, so already, folks, you have exact knowledge as to the value of this asset. Unlike a house where there's very uncertain knowledge. It might be worth 200, it might be worth 250, it might be worth 150, whatever. You have it here. And I'm going to give it to the highest bidder. So, how am I going to take your money? How am I going to take your money? Well, here's how it's going to work. You're going to send me a text and you can bid for it. As you bid for it, the price will go up. So if you, uh, let's just take the two gentlemen here. Uh, what's your name? Aiden. Aiden, and your name is? Mustafa. Mustafa. So if Aiden, if Aiden bids a five, five euro, okay, he's the top bidder. If Mustafa bids five euros and one cent, you're the top bidder, but you have to pay me five euros. And I'm, when, I'm, when I, you pay me, you are going to pay me. <laughs> I'm telling you, Aiden, I'm not kidding. You'll pay me, okay? So this, the reason that I'm putting it like this is there's a ratchet effect. This happened in Ireland. If, if the price of my house went up then, then, and I sold it, then the guy beside me felt, well, I should ratchet up the price of my house. There's a ratchet effect, okay? If he sold his house for 150 euros, 150,000, well, I need to jack up the price of mine, okay? So I'm auctioning this off to the highest bidder, but the second highest bidder pays me. Does everybody understand the rules? Are there any questions on the rules? Okay. Let me repeat just one more time. If, like, because what happens now is some smart aleck is going to go 300 euros. <laughs> you know, or something. I am going to collect the 300 euros. So, just for example, just to give you an example, folks. I've got a couple of bids here already. 
I will give you a slightly chewed pen. <laughs> we have our opening bid. A slightly chewed pen. I'd buy that for a dollar. Okay, so phone number 833-94018. Whatever the, whatever, you are, you're, the, you're the highest bidder. That's about 85, 85 cent for this 10 euros. By the way, by the way, you sent it in, you're the top bidder. This is one of those, oh, no. You're, like, I'm not kidding. You're the top bidder. And the person behind it for the slightly chewed pen, you're the second bidder. Oh, 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 this is excellent. This is excellent. That was fast. That was really, really fast. Okay. So normally what happens is, in other cases, the bids are coming in. The bids are coming in. As they come in, as they come in, please understand, and I'm going to say it again, I am going to take this money off you. Okay? So as they come in, we'll let them, we'll let them uh, pop in. They're busy coming in. Uh, actually, so many are coming in, they're kind of crashing the program. We can see that... Uh, maybe I'll just open the whole thing wider. We can see that... There should be a maximal bid, right? There should be a maximal bid, and here it is. Nine euros and 99 cents, okay? So you should bid nine euros and 99 cents. You're the top bidder. Here we go. Pat joined his left sock. Okay. <laughs> Where's Pat? Put your hand up, Pat. Put your hand up, Pat. Hi, Pat. Show me your sock. What kind of, what kind of Swarovski crystal encrusted gem is this? Yeah, maybe not, Pat. Maybe not. Okay, so your left sock. So nine ninety nine is the top bid. The top bid uh, from this chap. Who, who is this, by the way? Put your hand up. Ninety nine chap over there. Okay. Who's the Who's the person behind him? Uh, this person here. To buy you a slightly chewed pen. Okay, you you're you're out. You're out. It's it's this guy. He now owes me like a euro. Let's just say. He now owes me a euro. Uh, now, what else? What, what, what is going to happen now? What's going to happen now? What, what, what? Why am I doing this to you? It's not to bore you, right? I'm not, I'm not, when I say, like, I'm not kidding. I'm, not, I'm auctioning this. I'm going to give it to you. Right? The person who's behind, the person who's behind has to, has to make a choice now. You can, you can bid lower. But if you bid lower, you're going to, uh, if you bid lower, you're going to uh, collapse the system. Okay? If you bid lower, you're going to... Oh, burn, 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 burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I love this so much. This is great. Okay, who are you, you slut? <laughs> well done. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, my friend, you have a choice. You have a choice. I sincerely hope you got 999, because if you don't, I'm going to take your glasses and that natty green shirt. Okay, okay, uh, I'll break even half. So now our friend has a choice. Our friend has a choice. What's he going to do? Well, what are you going to do? You can do it as well. You can do it as well. This is not, a, this is not like some like, oh, maybe it's an exercise. I'm going to take the money. Now, so, so already, so, so the, 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 the asset, we are at par with the asset. However, however, we have a choice to make. What's the choice? Do we, do we overbid to win, to be the winner? I've already shown you that behavioral economics shows us that we will always want to be winners. We have what's called loss aversion. Nobody wants to lose, okay? Nobody wants to lose. Boom! Where's our friend? Where's our friend who just, who just bid 10 euros and one cent? Hand up. Two people put their hands up. Come on. It's one person. Okay. So somebody just bid. So uh, you, you're just like, <gasps> you can totally unclench. Because now you're on the hook for a tenner. All right, cool. So I've already, I've already broke even. I've broken even, folks. Actually, have I broken even? Yeah, I have. I have broken even. I've broken even, it's all good. Okay, so now our asset is fundamentally, it's fundamental value, we've bid beyond it. 
We've been beyond it. But now our secondary person has to make a choice. Do you want to win? Do you want to win? Or do you just want to not lose? Right? Because that's the game. Do you want to win? Or do you just want to not lose? There's a big difference, isn't there? Because whatever happens now, folks, someone's losing. And it's not me. Interestingly. Now, come on. Consider, consider what you'd do if you were in this situation. By the way, you can be in this situation if you'd like to be. You can be in this situation if you'd like to be. Would you like to be the winner? Would you like to be the winner? You can be the winner if you want. Notice, notice what has just happened, folks. Notice what has just happened. You are all really smart people. You all got a really good leaving cert. You represent some of the cleverest people in the country at the moment. You're young, you're well equipped, you're extremely socially aware. You are economics majors, some of you. I told you the rules. You have exact knowledge as to the value of the asset. And you still generated a bubble. We're, this is a bubble. It's a very small bubble, but it's a bubble. Now, who's going to help us get, make the bubble bubblier? Get the boom a little boomier. It's up to you. Text in. We'll see. But, uh, be under no illusion. Going to take it. Actually, I'm kind of vaguely curious about Mr. Jointer's sock. You know? In a, in a strange kind of like, oh, I wonder what that looks like kind of way. You know? Um, right. So, what's the lesson? <laughs> I love it. What's the lesson, folks? What's the lesson? The lesson is that bubbles can happen even with rational people who are fully aware of all of the information. Okay? Even with rational people who are fully aware of all the information. I'll allow this go on another two minutes and then we'll, then we'll stop. It's a good lesson, isn't it? It's a good lesson. So don't forget this lesson. In 10 or 15 years' time, you, most of you, you look, in 10 or 15 years' time, you'll probably be in your 30s on average. And, you know, this will all be a bit of a distant memory to you. It'll be a distant memory. And you'll be asking yourself, should I buy a house today? Should I buy a house? And if you say yes, try to remember this moment. Try to remember... Okay. Try to remember this moment. Stuff from the stables, Des O'Callaghan's left nut. <laughs> Can I just say first off, where's Des? Where's Des? Hi Des, stand up for us there. Des, stand up here. Stand up Des. Des, we're going to need to make an appraisal of that left nut. <laughs> is there anybody here who's willing to appraise Des's left nut? I gotta say, I'm, this is one of the one of the. I might delegate it to one of the TAs or something, because now I don't know. I don't know what the value of Dez's left nut is. If there is, is there anybody who is willing to have a secondary auction for Dez's left nut? <laughs> one of the girls is like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> there. Okay, that that's really beyond the bounds of propriety. But um, so two pints of stuff from the stables. How much is a pint in the stables? Four euros, that's eight quid. Is Dez's left nut worth two euros and a cent? Two euros and two cent? Is there anybody here who'd give me two euros and two cent just to see his left nut? Because <laughs> if so, Dez, you're the winner. See, Dez, I know you're going, oh, no, really, Dez. Yeah. Oh, you see, oh, 10 pounds. Very good, very good. Did you mean... Pound sterling? Or do you mean like some kind of weird Zimbabwean sterling or something? Do you mean 10? Hands up who made that bid? Hands up who made that bid? 10 pounds? Because that is like 12 euros. You meant to do that? You meant. So, you, so now you're, you owe me a 10 pound note. So we have a winner. Who's 1001? Somewhere. Who's 1001? Yeah, okay, okay. You're my man. All right, this is cool. So you've now, yeah, this is excellent. So we're going to go on. 
you know 10 pounds, not 10 euros. Okay, cool. Excellent, excellent folks. So that's like 12 euros. So we, we've already got a 20% asset bubble. I let one more round of bidding go. Let one more round of bidding go, and then we'll stop it. So, you've, you've bought me a cup of coffee. The first time I did, the first time I did this, the first time I did this, the students clearly, they were the, they were the children of the boom. And I auctioned off a 20 euro note Yes, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Tomorrow's lunch paid for, go on. Okay, have you any reply, young man? Well done, 20 quid. <laughs> A 100% asset bubble, 100%. Okay, okay. <laughs> Shall I do the dance of success one more time? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't then, okay. Traumatize any more students. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. I'm delighted. Now, we'll stop there. Who's our, who's our winner, quote unquote? Where are you? Who's our winner? Claim your prize. You, you, this is your asset. You may collect it at the end of the lecture. Uh, you know, you can, you can collect it any time. Or you can come down now and get it if you want. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, one eight seven three four. Let's check. Somebody's phone is about to go beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Once it's said. See you again. So now, what's the lesson? The lesson is that asset bubbles form all the time, everywhere. Okay. Asset bubbles form all the time, everywhere. So you can come down and pick up your prize, and I will take the difference. No problem. I have changed, by the way, so it's no problem. Uh, and, and thank you very much for playing. Hopefully, you will not forget this lesson. This is not just a lesson in economics. This is not just a lesson for this lecture. This is one of these life lessons. When you hear somebody going on about this time is different, and house prices rising, and you've got to get on the ladder, and rent is dead money, Remember this moment, okay? Remember this moment. Now, we'll move on. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, we have a view of the crisis which looks a bit like this. We have the view of the crisis which looks a bit like this. It's a rocking horse view. It's a rocking horse view. And the rocking horse view comes essentially Oh yeah, I'll do that later. The Rocky Horse view comes essentially from the work of Paul Samuelson and people like that, a guy called Ragnar Frisch. The idea is essentially that the economy is a, a rocking horse and you push it and it rocks and then it returns to its equilibrium. Okay? You push the rocking horse, it rocks, and then it calms down and returns. Okay? However, this is not what has just happened. This is not what has just happened. The economy is not a rocking horse. It's the wrong metaphor. We've talked, we talked a little bit when, when the computer was, was getting sorted that the economy can be represented as a series of balance sheets connecting each important sector, okay? There are no rocking horses. It's a picture of the stocks, not the flows within an economy in a given moment. What does it look like? Well, you gotta, you gotta take a bit of a leap with me, folks. This may seem a little bit dry and boring, but actually, it's extremely important. I showed you this picture. Households have tangible capital, equities, bills, money deposits and cash, and loans on the other side. Firms have tangible capital and financial assets on one side, liabilities of loans and equities on the other. Financial intermediaries, which we'll which we pretend are banks, but really this is an enormously complicated area. This is like pension funds, insurance funds, uh, uh, financiers, shadow banking, mutual funds, hedge funds. This is the global financial industry. It is, for in, even in Ireland, it is 10 times the size of our economy. The assets held by the IFSC 
almost a trillion euros. Okay? So you can see their assets, the assets of a bank, regular stuff, business consumer loans, whatever. Their liabilities, deposits and bonds. Insurance companies, their assets are their bonds, mortgages, business loans and securities. And their liabilities are the premium that you guys have to pay out. They pay out to you. Pension funds hold the same essentially as insurance funds, but their, their liabilities are employer and employee contributions. Expect to see for the next 20 years nothing but grief about pension funds. Nothing but grief. Do you remember at the start of this lecture series, I asked uh, how many of the female members of the class planned on having kids? And I think the average was about 0.001 child per, per, per female. The reason that th this is the case is because of where you are in your lives, mostly. However, there's something called the replacement ratio. And it's a number. It's 2.1. If every fertile woman doesn't have 2.1 children, the population will begin to fall. If the population begins to fall, that means that there are more older people as a percentage of younger people. In other words, the dependency ratio will increase. When you become old and you have a pension, you don't need to be old to have a pension, by the way, as Irish politicians um, uh, can show you, but... Generally speaking, uh, if, you're, if you're in your 70s, generally speaking, your income doesn't come from the amount of money that you've saved into the pension over the years. It actually comes in any year, in any given year, from the flows uh, uh, in the other parts of the sectors. Okay? And uh, what that effectively means is that the younger workers are supporting the older workers every year. So if you don't have kids... Um, you're going to make it much harder for the average person in the working age population to uh, uh, keep their standard of living high because taxes are going to have to go up to fund pension entitlements. This is a really big deal and it's expect, expected to be the issue um, for the next 20 or 30 years. In, it's going to bubble up every couple of years. Um, so I have a really, really good pension right now. The way my pension works is if I retire as a full professor, I get two-thirds of my salary. So a full professor here earns 150,000 euros a year. So if I retire as a full professor, on my final year's salary, I have 100,000 euros a year, which is roughly 5,000 euros a month for the rest of my life. I haven't particularly been killing myself digging ditches for the last 40 years. So chances are, if I check out at 65 from here, I live to be 100. That's 35 years at 100 grand a year. Yeah, 3.5 million just for little old me. Happy days. I have no doubt, I have no doubt. Now there are guys, by the way, who they retired last year, that's what they're on, and they'll be on until they die. However, I have no doubt that what's gonna happen is my pension entitlements are gonna change. They have to. Simply put, there aren't enough of you to uh, support me. So they're gonna change. And I have no doubt about that, which is why I have a private pension as well. So um, pension funds will change. Financiers, finan financiers these guys generally deal with um, bank to bank loans. <coughs> Mutual funds and hedge funds, you'll hear a lot more about uh, later on. Now the idea of a balance sheet matrix is quite simple. <coughs> the matrix deals with assets and liabilities, stocks. And in a closed economy, it's only four sectors. Households, firms, financial sector, and the government. <coughs> okay? So we've got a really simple model of a haircut economy. Really simple model. Think about haircuts. You go for a haircut, the person cuts your hair. It's just a single transaction. Your hair is cut, job is done. Okay? Job is done. How much does a haircut cost, by the way? On average? 15 euros? 15, one five? 15, yeah, okay. So like 15 euros for a haircut. So you basically transfer money from one to another. So the government, let's just say, all haircuts are done by the state, yeah? State-sponsored haircuts. You rock in, you get your haircut once, once a month, whatever, and it's all good, okay? The government buys the services of the barbers, pays for them for money, from money which it prints. It fixes the price for an hour's labor, and let's just say there's loads of barbers in the world. Here's the balance sheet. Households plus H, government minus H, some zero. My point is, you can have a ridiculously simple economy, like that one, or an even, or a very complicated economy like this one. 
it can scale. Now, why are financial intermediaries important? Well, we're kind of running behind time, so I'll just tell you. They're important because they solve information problems. That's why financial intermediaries are important. They solve the problem of financial information. I need a loan. Who here has money? Good question. I need 10,000 euros for haircuts. I want to get a mohawk, um, one single point, and at the top of it, that fella's left nut. <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, 10 grand will be enough, right? You got two. You got. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> okay. Um, people listening back to this will just, yeah, okay. So, information issues. There are several. The first is adverse selection. The problem is, the problem is, bad drives out good. Adverse selection is a situation where bad loans drive out good ones. Moral hazard is where I behave differently when I'm insured as to when I'm not insured. If I know that I'll be bailed out regardless of what happens, I act in ever more reckless fashion. Which you should know is an exact way to describe the financial industry. Free riding. Free riding is exactly what it says in the tin. Free riding means I don't pay for a ticket, but I ride on the bus. I'm a free rider. I get the benefit. I don't experience the cost. Free riding can be positive or negative. And you can also have gluts and shortages. You can have too much saving, which is what we have right now, or too little, which is what we had in the 2000s. How is this solved? How are these solved? One, private loans. I guarantee you, hands up here who's loaned money to their family. Or let's do the stock and flows. Hands here who's gotten money as a loan from their family. I don't mean like your dad gives you 20 quid. That's not a loan. That's a gift, right? I, I, I mean, I, unless, unless your dad's really strange. I, I wish for this back, you know, in, 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 a, in a month with interest. Here's a contract. Sign it. Who are you? Yeah, none of those things. Your dad shouldn't be saying that stuff, okay? Uh, uh, hands over who's gotten or given a loan to their family. Yeah, okay. Pretty high. Okay, good, good, good. About 5% of the class. And basically, these are private loans, and you can be damn sure they will be repaid. Why? Because you, you don't want to be known as the, the brother that didn't repay the loans. Screening and monitoring. You can screen people. You can ask, well, how many, how many points do you have in your license? How many times were you caught drink driving? Um, you're not even wearing shoes. Somebody took your left sock. What's going on? You know, screening. You can screen it. You can monitor loans to see that they're getting paid back. And you can have collateral and debt contracts, uh, which start, stops that from happening. Now... The role of regulation. I think we will, we will stop on this and we'll talk about the role of regulation at the end of, at the start of the next lecture. Two announcements before we go. Two announcements. Here's the first announcement. On Friday of this week, there are no tutorials because of the open days. So please allocate yourselves to an earlier tutorial. We'll accommodate you this week. That's the first announcement. Second announcement is, you should have gotten an email from the, the, the student evaluation system. Please fill it out. It's extremely important to me that you fill out this form. Do your best. Thank you very much. I'll see you on Thursday. What? What? What about it? Oh, yeah, no, that's just from last year. It's, it's still, the module is still right. Uh, they didn't put up yet uh, the upload. Yeah, no, no, I, I will. I, oh, wait, I, I haven't?